Welcome back, everyone, to the Zero K November 2019 1v1 tournament. I am your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, and we have another round. Because that's how this tournament works with multiple rounds, and when we get to the fifth round, then we might have tiebreakers, at which point we end the tournament. So we're halfway through in round three. And the round three maps are going to be Incandescence, Rose River, and Thornford. So, so far, Thornford has been banned. And that leaves Incandescence and Rogue's River, which I expect to be Rogue's River. Incandescence, I mean, it's... Should be fine. Like, Rogue's River is a very flat map. It's kind of typical. It's a pretty easy map to get used to. It's very flat. But Incandescence is... Incandescence is a bit more clustered. It's a bit smaller. A lot of terrain in the way. A lot of choke points. I would love to see a game played on it, but I kind of don't expect we are going to. And indeed, we are going to be playing on Rogue's River. Because, yeah, that makes sense. That's much more... That is much more the style of the way... Zero K players tend to play. So yeah, Rogue's River is a very flat map. It's kind of open. It's pretty friendly to vehicles. That's kind of it, really. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't really seen it in a while, so I'm curious what strategy have developed on it in the last couple of months. Last time I saw it. It seemed like it was fine for 2v2, but for 1v1, it wasn't great. Though, one curious thing about the map, which is really interesting and worth bearing in mind, is that the map is actually a randomly, like a random position map. So, you actually could start anywhere with these places. And, oh, right, this has a weird water problem. But yeah, you can start basically anywhere here. And I'm not sure where the players have started. Look, Gallinson started over in the northwest. But Catastrophe, I have no idea. <laughs> not sure if they know either, honestly. But that is one thing about this map, is that you can end up with these weird situations where you are very close to each other. Okay, Catastrophe's in the south, and Gallison is in the west. So they're all on the same side of the river. Catastrophe going for Cloakabot Factory, Gallison going for Hovercraft, or Proxy Hovercraft. Right there. So Gallison, I'm not sure if they realize where... Catastrophe is. They might think Catastrophe is over on the southeast side of the map. Although, even then, Hovercraft's going to have a bit of a hard time getting around here. I mean, this is not particularly deep water, so Hovercraft isn't particularly necessary in order to actually work with this. At the same time, Gaunson, they if they get the drop on their opponent, I mean, it might actually work out pretty well. Catastrophe is assuming that Gaunson is over on the cross map. Checking the north side of the map, and actually looks like they might be checking... No, they are checking both. They have a glaive going over to the western side of the map, which will find Gaunson. Another couple going over to the northern side of the map, which won't find Gaunson, because Gaunson's not there. No one going over to the eastern side of the map, but that's fine, because Catastrophe knows exactly where Gaunson is. And has lost a glaive for that information. By now, Catastrophe knows they can expand over to the eastern side of the map without any real penalty. I mean, a, couple, a dagger is just trolling around there, seeing so if you can find anything, but Catastrophe knows exactly where Gaunson is, and therefore knows exactly where they can expand safely, and is doing exactly that. Eastern side of the map is going to belong to Catastrophe very shortly. Gaunson, on the other hand, is not really expanding super quickly outside of where they started. They are, however, deciding, hey, well, I'm close. Let's send a mace over there. That's mace rush. Well, two minutes in, I guess it's, yeah, it's still kind of a rush. I, sound, I know it sounds weird, but 0k is fast like that. Two minutes in is not that... It, it's it's not that fast, all things considered. Uh, 
And, okay, Wes is pointing out the chat. Yes, I also like RNG and competitive 1v1 games in relation to the start locations. Like, yeah, well, the players had a choice. I mean, they could have gone with Incandescence, which does not have RNG for start locations. But they went with Rogue's River. So, hey, I guess they're cool with that. And also pointing out that the matchup is not great for Cloakie. I kind of agree, but at the same time, Catastrophe is playing a much more expansive strategy. So if Gaunson keeps playing the way they're playing, I think Catastrophe will actually be able to outpace Gaunson economically pretty quickly. I mean, Gaunson is responding by expanding to the north, but Catastrophe went there a little bit faster. And I think it's possible, especially if they start building a lot of Ronin, that Catastrophe could pretty easily outpace Gaunson and take the match, despite the fact that the matchup is a little bit awkward for them. Now, that being said, what's, what's mace speed compared to Ronin? I think it's relatively comparable. Yeah, they're about the same speed, so it's that still makes it tricky. Ronin outrange maces, though, so Ronin should still win, but that turnaround time... That'll be fine. No, Ronin, Ronin will still win the fight. Maces aren't that fast. Ooh, okay, well, Scythe coming in here, which will be causing a bit of a bad day for... A bit of a bad day. Not that much of a bad day. In fact, that Scythe, I think, was kind of misplaced. In fact, that Scythe is very misplaced. I'm not sure why it went the way it did. Yeah, it got rid of a radar tower, which is a good choice. Just then didn't really do much else. Same time, though, there are the Ronin. That's what I was looking for. Ronin coming in here, along with the Catastrophe's commander, being a bit of a risky play here. I think Catastrophe just kind of wants to win this outright. They are ahead economically. Or no, they're behind economically. My bad. They're behind economically. They are expanding, but Gaunson did actually take the win, economically speaking, entirely due to overdrive. Entirely, entirely due to overdrive. Gaunson just has you know, all the wind generators up, set up by their metal extractors. Whereas, well, solar collectors here for Catastrophe, I think they would be causing overdrive, but it just looks like Catastrophe simply didn't have the energy in time. So Gaunson ending up slightly ahead on account of the use of extra power plants. Turning them into a lot more units and turning those units into a massively powerful raiding force, putting Catastrophe a bit on the back foot here, especially as the eastern side of the map looks to be heavily threatened. There's only one Lotus, and there are enough daggers to one-shot that Lotus so they all regroup. What, 700 HP? Yeah, 800 HP. Well, two-shot the Lotus. At the very least, they will kill the Lotus. Not to mention Gaunson having taken the north side of the map. There's not really a whole lot Catastrophe has other than this... Siege Force. That might be able to do the trick, but it's... It's tricky. I mean, Ronin are a powerful unit. And they have the sides coming in for extra support. But at the same time, there's the daggers coming in here. And only coming in two at a time. That was a mistake. The daggers having mostly to retreat in order to deal with the Ronin means that the eastern base for Catastrophe is still intact. And the daggers coming in here having been split up and not really able to deal enough damage to make a real dent in Catastrophe's forces. So Catastrophe actually doing a great job here for keeping themselves alive and managing to take control over the southwest side of the map, pulling themselves ahead economically as well as militarily. Not to mention Gaunt's commander is in a bit of a tight spot. The position is really not great. This mace is going to try to get in here, and we're going to see exactly what I meant. Ronin do a really good job against maces, because they just barely outrange them, and they slightly outspeed them. Scalpels coming in will be a bit of a problem, but again, there's already a scythe in play, so it's not like there's no options for dealing with that scalpel. Not to mention, the Quill going down as well, eliminating Gaunson's ability to rebuild at all quickly. Gaunson doing what they can, but they are e-stalling hard. And the wind generators are just about full capacity, so they're not going to be able to rely on the luck of wind in order to get them back on track. Not that they really should be, the wind is actually slowing down a bit. Glaze coming in to help get rid of the Scalpels, and they will have no problem doing so. The scalpel's down, the Mace is down, the Ronin are bearing down on Gaunson's commander, and nothing Gaunson has is really helping out here. I'm a little surprised we aren't seeing any energy structures being built over to the north side of the map where they... Okay, now there, there's the wind generators doing that. Especially as this western western main base is already being torn to pieces by glaives. I mean, Catastrophe is well set up to take this game. The only thing that's kind of main... No, never mind. Gaunson just lost his entire exp expansion area. I mean, they are building up wind generators over to the north side of the map, but they're so far behind economically, they can't. They can either build units to defend or build energy to be able to build units to defend faster. That is not a great choice. That is a choice of just how to lose. 
And Gallantson seems to be making the choice of try to get my energy structures up. Which I would agree with, except for the fact that they're going for wind generators on a map with very weak wind. I mean, they're kind of getting lucky, but only in a relative sense. That's the thing about winds, that you have to be careful about where you use it. On a map like this, it's kind of not worth it, just because the wind minimum is so low. It's generally better to go for solar plants. Maybe a few wind plants, maybe for safety, but honestly, 0.0, .0 to 0.3 minimum? Nah, go for solar. Always go for solar in that situation. I'd say 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 is the break point where you want to consider going for wind at least some of the time. Maybe 0 0.4, but not not really here. It's just not worth it. Not compared to solar plants. Not for the cash. I mean, Gauss is getting kind of lucky right now in that the wind generators... The wind is currently very fast. But at this point, Catastrophe has taken most of the map. Gaussin does not have a whole lot to work with. And that means that Catastrophe is basically well set up just to take this entire game. There's nothing to say other than Gaussin in their last stand doing everything they can to actually hold this back. It's just, there's only so much they can do. And now with the Glaives coming in to finish everything off, that's basically it. Gaussin's command is going to go down in about two seconds. Actually, the factory's going to go down faster. That's the main target. The Glaives don't even care about the, the commander. Get rid of the factory, get rid of the care tears, get rid of the builders, get rid of all this other stuff. Then worry about the glaives afterwards, and indeed the glaives managed to take care of the factory. Gaunson losing their commander pretty soon. In fact, I'm, there's the, there's the, not even GG, just there's the surrender. Throwing in the towel. That is Gaunson getting taken out basically due to lack of economy. It's kind of funny considering in a Cloakie versus Hover matchup that was said earlier, you know, shit for Cloakie. Well, Catastrophe managed to pull out regardless. I mean, they. They were highly aggressive. They got rid of the mace. They didn't have to worry so much about scalpels, honestly. Like, Gaunson just did not get in the position they wanted to be in. So yeah, that was that. Let's see what other answers there are, since that seems to be what we're doing here, is showing multiple matches very quickly through all the round. Hmm... Okay, who else is available? Hyrule and Petrol is done. He's right, and Kingstad is still going. Especially one I kind of wanted to see. So let's go to that one. And it's on Thornford. So we'll likely see a lot of Huffercraft. Yeah, a bit of a shame there that we didn't get as much coming out from from Gowns in there for Hover. Happens, though. Anyway, this match on Thornford. What do we have? We have Amphbots coming in from Kingstead. We have Hover coming in from Izzeride. And very quick raiding in the backs with Ducks trying to take out Izzeride's base, but not really managing to find too much success. Same time over the southwest, Izzeri getting a bit of harassment, but again, being torn apart. Kingstad just trying to find anything they can to find harassment, but not really managing to maintain much economy in the same time. At least managing to defend themselves from Izzeri's assaults. Now Kingstad going for those boys. Tearing apart the southwest side of the map, forcing the commander to retreat. And actually harassing quite heavily across the entire map, putting Izzeri in a really awkward position. While at the same time, Izzeri coming with the locusts over the center of the map, wiping out Kingstad's base. Very effectively wiping out Kingstead's base, putting Kingstead in an interesting position because they do have a fairly strong economy and they can rebuild quite quickly. They're also... This is a base trade, basically. This is a base trade play coming here for Kingstead. And Kingstead looks to be having the upper hand here. I mean, the Locusts are definitely causing problems, but it doesn't seem to be that big of a deal. Kingstead actually, indeed, managing to take out everything here. And those Locusts are not able to defend. That's taken out all of Izzeride's base. Kingstead has rebuilt. They are getting that gunship plant up. But in Izzeride's base, there's not a whole lot to be said other than boys. Boys for days. Wiping out the fusion reactor. Heavily damaging the gunship plant. Taking that out right afterwards. And this hovercraft platform will not last. I don't know if Izzeride's going to actually stay in the game. Kingstead's a little bit weak economically. But I don't know if Izzeride realizes that. Especially as Izzeride... I mean, they're losing a lot in the process of this fight. 
King's Dad's not really so concerned. Yeah, King's Dad's actually doing just fine over here in the back. Now they're getting their own locusts up, and, well, once that's done, it's not a whole lot that Izzeride can do. They haven't got anywhere to rebuild. Their commander over to the south side of the map getting up a caretaker. Looks like they're going to be trying to rebuild from here, but, again, Izzeride doesn't have much. They have this. This is their one lone military unit, is this one locust. Sorry, they have no military units left. Correction. And I just feel like Izzeride, I mean, they're playing... They're playing like a tournament. They're making sure to fight to the end. Getting a Cloakbot factory up. But King's Dead, they won that base trade. That's all there is to it. The Locusts simply did not survive long enough to... Well, they did survive long enough to kill off the base. They just couldn't take out the rest of it. King's Dead was able to rebuild. Izzeride was not. And, yeah, Izzeride just getting destroyed as a result. So, Kingstead, yeah, they've got the map. They've got the territory. They've, As soon as they find where Izzeride is, Izzeride is done. Kingstead, right now, they have, they have the boys. They have the ducks. They have... I have a gin, actually. Oh, I didn't even notice the gin there. Where's the gin connected to? All right, where's the lamp? Hmm, I don't see the lamp. Weird. Okay. Oh, wait. No, that's the torch. Yeah. Odd. But the gin there, but no apparent lamp. No, oh, Izzeride is... They're trying. They're definitely trying. They have the commander. The commander is unupgraded. They have the glaives. The glaives are going to have a really hard time. Fighting against locusts. That's not a terrible time. Locusts aren't too bad. Oof. Blasting is a little bit worse, but not still too terrible. Izzeride going with the commander. Desperately trying to get in here. Getting rid of some of the wasps. That's quite effective, actually. Nicely done. The wasps go down. The commander has actually done a pretty good job here. But Izzeride realizes there's just too much. Yeah, with the locusts coming in their main base. That's... Or their new main base. That's it. Izzeride GG's. And Kingstad takes the game again. Putting them undefeated so far. 3-0 against Izzeride's 2-1. And that is... I think it's just about... Yeah, that's it. That was the last game for round th two, round three. So we're going to be moving on to round four. That'll take a little a second just to set up. We'll be back with that when we're back with that. And imagine a lot of people want to see the excess graph. Well, too bad, because this stupid thing is... I don't know why it keeps doing this. Okay. Excess graph. Actually, pretty similar, honestly. Both players are pretty good for excess. Anyway, so yeah, we're going to be going back to next round. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. <laughs> 